some of our problems. And I want to assure you that, uh, inshallah, the chief servant gave us a target that we must come within that first 10. Okay. So now for the national we, festival, yes, what's your target? Yes, he gave us a target. Okay, for first 10. First 10. Ah, I wish he gave people the, first five. The, <laughs> the, last, the last one we are number 19. The last okay. two festivals in Abeokuta, they just said happens to come second to the last. Okay. Um, we told him that, uh, sir, we are going to improve. Now we are okay. number 19. So apart um, from the chief servant's um, suggestion, your yeah. own personal target note and the team? Yeah, my own personal target is within that five. The okay, one of our major problems is, you know, we are very good in team sports, okay. neglecting the individual sport. Simply as a lot of we don't have the facilities. But like I told you, that is what we are going to uh, look into this year. And we have started preparing for that. Okay. Right now, the athletes are in open camp, but maybe two, three months before that competition, we're going to close camping. Okay. Your feet. All right. Well, you're doing very well in your ministry. I must commend you on that because you said that it wasn't the way you saw it when you went into the ministry, and now you're trying to spice up everybody to put your hands together to make sure that the state move forward. You're doing very well. Thank you very much. Nice to have you on the program. Very cool. All right. I've been uh, talking with the Honorable Commissioner of Sports, Alaji Abubakar Gaoba Mohammed, and he's been saying so much about Niger State and the sporting activities in the country and also Niger State as well. And we've come to the end of our program today. I am Imelda Isin. Keep a date with us, same time, same station. Yes. Okay. So, what is the future of the ministry and sports generally in the state? Uh, well, we have a very bright future. When we came on board, we, like I told you, we were faced with so many challenges. One so. of the first things we attended to was to bring back the lost glory of Niger State in sporting activities. And I want to assure you that uh, uh, we have achieved that. So the next thing now, I think, is mass participation in sports. Okay. So that we engage our youth, we foster them from engaging social vices. And whether we like it or not, sport is a very good investment. It is. I agree and, with you. Fine. And thirdly, we want to ensure that uh, this year we improve our facilities. Okay. Because if you want your team to excel, you must have a very conducive environment. atmosphere for the environment for them. So we want to go on, like I said, on mass participation in sports this time around. And that is why we want to pay attention to developing our sporting facilities across the state. By the time we do that, of course, you see youth coming out to go and train. Okay. Along the line again, we found, the government found that there was the need to merge the Ministry of Tertiary Education with that of Science and Technology. Okay. All in but an why, attempt... Why did, why did they see the need to merge it? Yeah, as, as we move along and as we identify problems confronting education, we now try to look for ways to solve these problems. And so man is always thinking for solutions, okay. looking for solutions to problems. And so our restrategization and you know, reposition ministries is based on the need to tackle the problems we found in the education. Okay. So, um, what is the status of the implementation of the White Paper on Justice Mayaki Commission of Inquiry? Well, this is a very fundamental, well, it's a very beautiful question because I, I think this is one of the major policy trusts of this government. Okay. And uh, I think it has dominated major part of our government and uh, we, 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 we have no regret whatsoever to have taken that decision because it has really brought to fore the need for transparency and good governance okay. in, in conducting public affairs. 
you should not be seen doing things just by oral statement you should be able to package your things in a way that as a public officer tomorrow after leaving tomorrow somebody will be there to yes. check you and it's a lesson to even those of us that are still in government that we have the responsibility to do things rightly and to that, be a man yes, to, um, to be a prayer man because at the end of the day even the cause of some of this MOU we were saying, we don't do it properly, we don't pay attention. We should know that tomorrow we can equally be called for question. So we are now in this world being called not to even to wait until the year after. So when the, the whole idea of this uh, Justice Mikey Commission of Inquiry was just like I explained at the last edition that uh, it came out of the desire that when the chief servant came on board, because of his experience in the FCT and other federal process, he discovered so many people came to say, Oh, I have a so 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 amount that uh, government I'm owing the government or the government is owing me. Mm -hmm. And there was no record. So what they did was to set a small committee to say, please verify these debts. Okay. Somebody has a debt, please go and confirm. After the verifications, some people came and say, Oh, I was not given because there are some of those verifications were found not to be true. Yes. Some of those debts were claims were found not to be true. So when they came, they started complaining that ah, we are not giving fair. How can you determine me without hearing me? And this is I have this. So the government now was faced with challenges of how do we go about it again? And then we took to the, the chief servants uh, in office, three years in office of the okay. chief servants is likely to come up. That is some anything from May 29th to June of us. Okay. But I know very soon we are going to do the fundraising dinner. So that from there determines when the project will be completed. No, 30, for this one now is 30, 30 weeks. Okay. The contractor is given 30 weeks now to finish up the construction work. Okay. But as I told you, the other things, it's not the building. Mm. Or oh, you mentioned other things. For the furnishing. furnishing and others. You see? So you, even if you have a building, you don't have the where people should sit. It's not yet in the office. <laughs> so it has to, that's the reason, but we cannot do it at once. Yeah. That's the reason why we break it into faith. Construction of the structure itself now is what we are working on. By the time we finish that, we talk of furnishing the internet uh, connections and so on, so that we have linkages with all over the world. It's a nice idea. Yes. And uh, the present uh, structure has, uh, we have 24 offices. Okay. It's a one-story building with 24 offices, 15 toilets, mm -hmm. located at three different locations within the secretary. Okay. Activities. Okay. Activities. Our achievements are basic, uh, tangible things that me and you and Agnari Nigerians can all feel. Okay. So we have been talking about the activities that we're doing, that in the real sense, at the end, we'll be able to give us some indicators that we have been able to salvage that sector that has collapsed. Okay. Yeah. And you were so, saying uh, something about the health sector. That is what we have done in the health sector. Mm. And then we also realized that uh, prevention, which for several years we have been hearing that prevention is better than cure. Okay. Um, we're doing some, some kind of work sure that uh, malaria is being apart from from the start. So I know in the 2008 project we gave about 50,000 insecticide treated nets. Treated nets? Yes, okay. insecticide treated nets. And then we carry out a sensitization program uh, at the rural communities for environmental sanitation and environmental cleanliness okay. to ensure that we don't allow mosquitoes to breed within the community where we live. Um, under the same 2008 projects, we have a component of what we call tricycle rural ambulances. Tricycle rural ambulances. Okay. We intend to provide two rural ambulances to each local government. Okay. That will principally be responsible for carrying pregnant women to the nearest primary health care, basic okay. health care, general hospital, so that uh, they could. After your tenure. Yeah, after Athena, we want to be seen to have made a modest contribution to okay. enhancing the, the 
job creation, poverty, uh, alleviation, poverty eradication, and then economic growth generally through SMBs and microfinance. All right. It's nice to have you in your program. Thanks for coming. Thank you. And thanks for educating people about the... Those who live and work there. Certainly. So we should tap into their resources. We should tap into their knowledge of that industry and that culture to say, what do we need to do? If you want to move to anywhere, I believe it would be unreasonable for you not to do your research. You should market, you should check into that community to find out what do you need to do, how do you get there. And, and what we're saying is... Into system. Exactly. Okay. So we're saying we have Nigerians, let's use them. Okay. Well, then why did they decide to have a conference here in Niger State, Mina? <laughs> uh, that's the question. Actually, if you have been reading a lot of news on the internet and print, okay. uh, a lot of people have said, wow, well, we're coming to Niger State. We go to Niger State, there's politics in Nigeria, there's an issue in Niger State, there's a big guy in Niger State, there's a chief servant in Niger State. Excuse me, when we come and we say we're going to Nigeria. Okay. Niger State is in Nigeria. Certainly. Yeah. Uh, this conference has taken place in Tanapa, okay. which is not a problem at okay. present time. But uh, thank God, by around uh, 19, about 10 years later, we got a new secretariat. Uh, that's when we even began to have sufficient uh, office space for some of the workers. But the expansion, again, as I said, was not matched by uh, increase of supply of modern equipment, no training, you know, to update people on... There was no training then? There wasn't serious training. Then At the initial house. stage, when the number was small, yes, and service training was automatic. If okay. you get admission into any university, the government sponsors you. But as the service got larger now and the resources became leaner, all those things gradually <laughs> stopped. Okay. Uh, so different governments had different emphasis. But uh, frankly, the situation only uh, got the attention of government during this regime. Okay. Because despite the large number, since the governor came from the federal civil service, he decided.